Oh, it sounds to me like you're the one's got a problem. So <laughs> you heard, huh? Yep. Yeah, the place gets to you. Yeah, I've been doing it for so long. Come here, boss. Maybe you should think about taking a vacation. Yeah. Probably need one. But once I go down that mountain, I ain't coming back. <clears throat> what do you mean? Yeah, I'm tired of making the same mistakes. You know, I heard you uh, arguing. What's his name? Oh, yeah. We do that all the time, you know. Yeah. A few rounds on the bag. It beats uh, a few hours in a head shrinker's couch. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it feels like maybe you got a lot of anger inside of you, huh? Hey, kid. We all got anger. Including you. Not me. Yeah, right. I said not me, all right? Hey, everybody's mad about something. I used to get out of my system in the ring. But now, uh, I take it out on the back. Well, you're lucky to find something that works for you. Yeah. But you ought to try it. Stay here, I'll get that. All right. Service station. Check service for the capital ass. Depends who's asking. It's me. Yeah, I thought so. How you doing? Um, I've got a little problem. What's up? Well, I was on my way to see you, and my sister's car kind of broke down. Hey, where are you? Um, somewhere out in the boonies, and the mechanic here says he can't fix it till early in the morning. So you need some help, right? I was kind of hoping maybe you could come and pick me up and I could crash at the cabin. All right, where are you at? Um, I'm at a place called Woodies. It's about five miles west of the Do you know it? Yeah, I know exactly where it is. Can you get away from work? Yeah, I guess Carl could cover for me. Uh. Jagger, I'm sorry I had to call you. I had no one else to call. It's all right. Okay, listen, I'll be there as soon as I can, all right? Okay. I'll be waiting here for you. Bye. <laughs> Hey, Carl, you need a favor. Okay, we're at home. This car is so great, isn't it? I love the way it rides. Was it fun to drive? Mm, yes, it was. It was really sweet of Jason to let you borrow it. I know. I really wish he could give you a ride up to that car. Well, Mom, you can't because he has basketball practice. Okay, well, thanks for the ride. I'm sure. Jason's such a winner, isn't he? I mean, he does such nice things for you. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, he always makes a point of including you in all the family things. I mean, Mom. like all those great parties. Mom, I have to go. And, you know, the Quartermains do think of you as one of the family. I don't think I'd go that far. Oh, sure they do, honey. And, you know, a family like that can do a lot of things for you. Is there a point to this? Yeah, I'm trying to emphasize the positive. I mean, if you were to pick Jagger over Jason, you wouldn't have any of this. Mom, please, I'm not going to get into this right now. It would have been a big mistake, honey. I mean, I'm glad Jagger's gone. I hope he never comes back. I have to go. Okay, okay. all right. Have a safe yeah. trip. I'll see you Thank soon. You. Oh, this is such a great car. I love it. Hi. Bye-bye. <laughs> So what's this fabulous deal you think I won't be able to refuse? 
I'm offering you my remaining shares of EOQ stock and my part in the waterfront project. <laughs> sure you are. For the right price, of course. Tell me, did the uh, recession hit you kind of hard? No, not really. Then what? Let's just say I'm looking to liquidate. I see. Why in the hell are you coming to me? Because I thought we could make a deal, Ned. Mm-hmm. If I were interested, and I'm not saying I am, what would it cost me? Just your word that you won't go public with the Jenny Kensington tape. Here she is. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, yes. <laughs> How old is she? She's one week old today. And uh, let's see, ah, here's her mother. Oh, my gosh. Wind dancer. Gorgeous. Mm. Where'd you keep them? In Connecticut. You'll see them both when we get there. I didn't see any horses there. Huh? Didn't know you kept horses there. Huh? What? You mean there's something that you actually don't know about me? Yes. Uh, there's probably quite a few things that I've yet to uh, turn up, but uh, give me time. All right, I will. You know, I, I guess that this fall has a lot to do with why you're going back to Connecticut. <laughs> yes, you're right. My horses are a great passion for me. I hope you don't get bored. Oh, I'm sure I will. So, have you uh, heard from Bill? No, but then I didn't expect you. You know, I, I, I still can't figure out why he would tell you that he's going to Paris and then would wind up in Japan instead. He's obsessed with finding that painting. Mm -hmm. I've given up trying to understand his behavior. We'll be landing soon, Mr. Halifax. Good, thank you. Uh, do I have time to freshen up? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Sure. What's the occasion? Oh, he's checking one of his prize foals. Horses, huh? Oh, this guy has a bundle of, of, uh, what, hobbies, I guess, huh? How was your trip? My trip. Uh, my trip was, uh, not what I'd hoped. Still, it's impossible to have a bad time in Paris, right? Paris was a mistake. I, it wasn't a good idea. I was just too impulsive. Well, I'm dying to hear all about it. Well, I'll tell you. The whole itinerary as soon as that. We're about to land, Miss Sutton. I... Um, Halifax would like you to take your seat. Yes, right. I'll be right there. This came home for the big basketball game tomorrow. Well, I'm sure he wishes that he could be there. No, he doesn't care. That's not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not, Sly. I mean, look, I understand why you're angry, but you know that your dad loves you very much. Yeah, well, if my dad loved me so much, he wouldn't be gone all the time. His being gone has nothing to do with loving you. He's just trying to find his painting, that's all, and he can't do that in Port Charles. 
Yeah, he's trying to find his painting. That's all he cares about, himself and that stupid painting. At the moment, yeah, I, I know that it looks that way, but you know better. Look, honey, come here. Come here. I think, um, there's something you need to understand about your dad. What? He can be very single-minded. What does that mean? Well, it means that once something gets into his head, he's like a dog with a bone. He won't let go. Yeah, well, what if I don't want a dad who's like a dog? Well, I mean, why am I the one who's always having to understand? Oh, honey, I know that that's hard. I mean, I fought over this with your dad a lot. It's just that that's the way he is, and he's not about to change. What if I don't want my dad that way? I mean, I want him to take me to all the big basketball games and take me out for pizza. I know. I understand. I mean, believe me, your dad has always been this way. In fact, I remember our mom telling me once that when your dad was a kid, somebody stole his bike, and he searched everywhere for it. I mean, he, he put up signs. He offered rewards. He scoured the neighborhood looking for that bike. I mean, he wouldn't give up. So what happened? Did he find it? Of course he did. What I'm saying is he never gives up until he gets what he wants. Even if it takes a long time? No matter what it takes. And I also know that he's not going to give up looking for this painting. So in the meantime, I think that maybe we should just make the best of our time together. Huh? What do you say? Am I to understand that you're going to give up your entire fortune for Jenny? You heard the offer, Ben. How unbelievably noble. I wouldn't call it noble, Ashton. What would you call it? I would do anything for Jennifer. Oh, aren't you wonderful. Ashton, if you had one single shred of decency in your entire body, you would be doing the exact same thing. You know that? Personally, I think it's a big mistake to put Jenny and decency in the same sentence. That's because of your short-sightedness, but that's beside the point. Jenny is a liar, and liars always lie. When are you going to understand that? Someone has to teach her a lesson, and it may as well be me. So you think, through revenge, you're going to gain satisfaction, right? What I think is none of your business. Okay, so back to the offer. Do we have a deal or not? Isn't it cool? Yes, I do like it. Wait, let me put this down. Was this a factory or something? Uh, no, it was a school. Oh, my. Oh. That's why I always thought this place was kind of creepy. I'm <laughs> smart. Okay. Isn't that perfect? Yes, Thank it you. is. It makes the place feel very mm. cool. Well, looks like you've been living here for years to me. Oh, please. <laughs> no, I like this place, seriously. Yeah? Yes, yes, this is much more like you, Jenny. Much more than the quarter main mausoleum you lived in. Yeah, she decorated it all by herself. She did? Oh, come on. I had a little help from my friend. Fleister helped me rearrange the furniture today, didn't you? Oh, my, my. Yeah, but you're decorating some of the other apartments in the building, too. You should see them. They're really cool. Yes, now, what are you? Are you my new agent? Could be. Well, well, you don't have to tell me. I know your, your aunt is just fantastic. She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. She sure is. <laughs> okay, that's enough. This is time for you to finish your homework. I already did. Can I go up to Robbie's now? I mean, you said I could sleep over. Yeah. Did you take out the garbage? Uh-huh. Did you make your bed? Yeah. Well, then, okay, Slugger, I think you can go on and see Robbie. But, hey, don't leave the building, and make sure you come back later and get your PJs. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, Slugger. See ya. What? He sure is happy. Yeah, as happy as he can be while he waits for his father to remember that he exists and comes home. Bill is still trapped like he's still looking for his painting. And God knows where he's going to find it. Oh, gosh, a win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gosh. Mm. Well, in the meantime, Sly's in good hands. Oh, well, listen, he's great company for me. I mean, it's terrific ha having him here. That's good. Kids, <laughs> you never know what they're going to leave in the cupboard. <laughs> <country. clears throat> you know what? Ten years from now, I can see you with your own kids, and I think you're going to be a terrific mom. 
to America, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Why do you say that? You have your whole future ahead of you now. You and Paul can do whatever you want since Ned's filed for divorce. Oh, come on, think about it. Ned's going to do everything he can to make that impossible for me. Not to mention, you know Tracy's not going to give Paul an easy time. No, believe me, I know that neither one of them's going to quit till he has this pound of flesh. It's a very interesting offer. I thought you might think so. I'll consider it. But right now, I have my hands full with this airline acquisition. I'm sure so. you can find the time, Ned, to squeeze this one in. I said I'll consider it. Well, if you're not interested, I could always withdraw the offer, I suppose. Thanks. I didn't say I wasn't interested. I need you to sign me. Hi, Hello, Paul. Julia. Hi. I'm sorry, am I interrupting? You no, know, I, just... I was just leaving. No, 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 I'll leave. I just need you to sign these employment contracts, and then I can go. Paul, we were finished, weren't we? I've said everything I have to say, Ned. And I believe I've said I'll get back with you. Look forward to hearing from you. Julia? What was that about? What's he doing here? I just had a most incredible afternoon, business-wise. Paul's here on business? Paul just made me a very interesting offer. You look a little familiar, but I can't place the face. Well, I'm not from around here. But you've been through here before, right? Yeah, actually, I was here a couple weeks ago. I knew it. I never forget a face, especially a pretty one like yours. Uh, I came in here the, the day we had the big storm up here. Forget oh, it, you know. you're lucky you didn't get caught with that little car you got out there. Uh, do you have a soda machine? Yeah, right in the office next to the phone. Okay, Okay, miss. You're all set. Oh, right. What do I owe you? Eight bucks even. Eight bucks. Thanks. Sure. Um, are you reading this book? Me? No. <laughs> no. That's the kid that uh, works for me's book. Really? Yeah, Jagger. He's always got his nose in some book or another. Thank you very much for everything. Hey, come back and see us real I soon, will. huh? Yeah, I don't know what I would have done without you. Ah, well, you ought to figure something out. You're pretty resourceful, you know. Yeah, I am. Hey, it's getting dark outside. Oh, I love the way the light reflects against the snow. It looks so beautiful. Garbage can lids outside. Let's go sledding. I don't think so. Oh, come on. Let's go. I'm not in the mood, all right? Come on. It'll be fun. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. It'll be fun. Let's go. You don't 
don't give up, do you? No, I don't. I'm always up for adventure. You should know that. You used to be, too. What happened to you? Give me a break. Come on, what happened to you? Jagger, I really hate to say this, but I don't know. You're turning into... Don't say... A drag. What are you calling a drag? You drag. You're a drag. Drag. You're a drag. Drag. You're more drag than I am. <laughs> All right. Come on, I won't call you drag if you take me sweaty. Okay. All right. Okay? You're looking for some kind of excitement, right? Yeah. Right. I'm exactly where to take you. Ooh. Stay. Stay there. You must be so excited about that new phone. No, oh, I am. She's so pretty, isn't she? She's gonna look just like her mother. This place really suits you. Really? In what way? Well, I, I know you have a reputation of being a tough, hard-nosed businessman, but that isn't really you, is it? Do me a favor, will you? Don't tell anybody that. If, if they gets out, I stand to lose a lot of money. Don't worry, it'll be our secret. <laughs> I have to admit, working and riding my horses really is a great source of contentment for me. You've made a very good life for yourself here. This beautiful house, these gorgeous grounds. It's really too bad you haven't found a woman to share it with. Yeah, well, like I said, I haven't found... I know, you haven't found the perfect woman. Perfect woman, that's right. What is your idea of a perfect woman? Well, someone who isn't afraid to take chances. Someone who can live a little bit on the edge. And someone who doesn't take life so damn seriously. I see. And someone who can totally relax and truly enjoy life. Well, I don't think the woman you described would be that difficult to find. No, she probably won't be that hard to find. But convincing her that I'm the perfect man for her that may prove a little difficult. I'm starving. How about you? Yes, yes. I'm very hungry. Good. Let's go into the kitchen. Let's see what the cook can wrestle up for us. Sounds like a good idea. public with it. Yeah, no, he's going to make it seem like I was some sort of a tramp. And that's not the way it was. Of course not. I know that. No, I mean, that's not the way it was at all. I was 16 years old. His daughter, Betsy, was my best friend. And he played tennis almost every day. And he was always around, I guess, because he was just interested in what his kids were doing. That must have been pretty intimidating. Yeah. At first, I was pretty scared. Here he was, this U.S. senator, and I'm just this kid from the wrong side of the tracks. But then, uh, as I got to know him, I stopped being scared. Ginny, what was he like? Well, I expected him to be stuffy or snobbish. But, Meg, that's not how he was at all. I mean, he was so easy to be with and easy to talk to. 
He listened to everything I had to say, you know? I mean, he really made me feel important. And before I knew it, I had this huge crush on him. Does this make any sense? Yes, it does make sense. You are only 16. He's probably pretty sophisticated, too, huh? Oh, yeah. He was. I mean, I had never known anyone like him before. I bet. And the next thing I knew, we were having an affair. It just happened. I mean, neither of us meant for it to continue, but... I don't know, it just did. So what did he do then? Did he try to stop it? Well, he told me that nothing like this had ever happened to him before. Meg, I knew that it was wrong, but for a 16-year-old kid, this was pretty heady stuff. Of course it was. And I'm sure it was pretty different from all the other 16-year-old boys you knew. Maybe it was my first time. And then I got pregnant. I didn't know what to do. I knew it would only hurt both our lives. Oh my God. What, what happened then, Jenny? I had a miscarriage when I ended it. Meg, I never thought that I would ever see him again. Jenny, you must have gone through hell. Yeah. It was a pretty tough time. You know, I just... I don't understand how Ned could be so vindictive when this happened so long ago. Ned's just furious that I lied to him. And he can't forgive me for it. I mean, you're only 16 years old. Ned doesn't care about that. He just wants revenge. But what for? I mean, you, you didn't you didn't do anything wrong. So, okay, okay. So so you didn't tell the truth, but you had your reasons. I, I think you've suffered enough. Ned thinks that I betrayed him. And Meg, I did lie to him. And now he's not going to stop until he gets his revenge. You know, I always knew that Ned was ruthless when it came to business. I never imagined that he would turn on me. Isn't there anything you could do to stop him? I don't think so. No, Ned's not going to be satisfied until he destroys me and Kensington. Gosh. Do you, do you think he's really going to go through with making his threat public? Mm-hmm. I do. And it could destroy Senator Kensington's career. Well, he should have thought about that before he slept with the 16-year-old. I know. Meg, I just keep thinking about his family. I mean, I think this whole damn thing is so unfair. I mean, the senator's career, his family, my life. It's all going to be destroyed because of a mistake that was made seven years ago. And there is nothing that I can do. So if you can believe it, he wants to liquidate his ELQ stock and the waterfront property. I can't believe it. Why? Well, I guess the recession hit him kind of hard. Mm. So what's he asking, top dollar? No. If you can believe it, he's practically giving it away. Paul's throwing away money. He sounded pretty desperate. Well, he must be. It's come to you, of all people. Well, obviously, he's not right in the head. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been taken in by Jenny. Can't be thinking too clearly. So you're telling me that this waterfront property is operating at a loss? Maybe. I don't know. He sounded very desperate to sell it. Sheesh. I can think of a hundred ways to make that property a profit-making venture. <laughs> what? I just had a thought. If you take dear old Paul up on this offer, do you know who your partner will be? Bill <laughs> Oh, wonderful William. Your friend and mine. Mm -hmm. Well, that is an added bonus. <laughs> and I bet you can make his life hell, can't you? I could certainly give it my best shot. Mm -hmm. You like that piece? Yes, very much. In fact, everything here is, is very impressive. <laughs> well, here's to your good taste. And to yours. 
Oh, this is very good. Oh, glad you like it. I know that you grew up with art all around you, but what got you interested in it personally? You know, oddly enough, it came in a flash. Something you saw and just fell in love with? Head over heels. Let me see if I can guess what it was. Okay. Oh, I don't know. This is going to be difficult. You have a very eclectic taste here. Well, it's not really in this room, so do you want me to tell you? Yes. But, first of all, let me guess that it was something very simple. Yes, it was. It was very simple. It was a pencil drawing by Surratt. <laughs> it's still one of my most treasured possessions. It's funny, isn't it, how we can get so passionate about a piece of art? Yes, it is. Like Bill in his summer in Provence. Yes. What is his attachment to that painting? He never told me. <laughs> to travel the ends of the world to retrieve it, there's got to be a powerful connection. What do you think it is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's fascinating, though. But it seems to me that there's more to it than just that painting. Oh, oh thank you. Mm. What's the occasion? Oh, I need an occasion to bring you flowers? I don't think so. You don't have a problem with that, do you? No, no problem at all. In fact, I better get these into water, or you might not want to bring me them anymore. I don't think you have to worry about that, Jenny. Oh, Paul, you are such a sweetheart. I don't know how I would get through this mess without you. Well, fortunately, you don't have to worry about that either, do you? Paul, I want to ask you something. Uh-oh. I know that tone. What? Does my affair with Senator Kensington bother you? I mean, do you think about it? And does it upset you, but you're just not talking to me about it? Jennifer, I think about it, but it doesn't bother me. You were 16 years old. You are a child, okay? I know, but Ned feels different. I'm not Ned. Jenny? I know that. I, I just... Listen, didn't... when are you going to get it through your head? I fell in love with you the first moment I saw you, and nothing that you could have ever done or will do will change that. You got it? Well, how about if Ned makes my affair with Kensington public? Well, how are you going to feel if my name is dragged through the mud? Exactly the way I feel right now. Nothing will change. Paul, I love your support, but I am just so worried about that. Jennifer, you're borrowing trouble for yourself. Look, I just have a really good feeling that this is all going to work out okay, that's all. You have no idea how much I wish I could believe that. Then believe it, Jennifer. I can't. As long as Ned has that tape, I feel like I'm sitting on a time bomb. Idea. It was my idea to go sledding. I didn't know we were gonna get soaked and wet. Ugh. Well, it's not like you're gonna melt. Oh my god, look at your shirt. <laughs> well, look at your shirt. Oh, cashmere. It's ruined because of you. This is oh, ruined because well, of I'm you. I am so sorry. But just remember who wanted to go sledding. I know, I know. I'm not complaining. 
Oh, good. You know, um... Oh. <laughs> this what? is awful. I think we better get this off before you catch a cold. Put your arms up. Go ahead. <laughs> There's no proof that Ned is going to do anything with that tape. Oh, really, Paul? I, I sure wouldn't bet that Ned wouldn't go public with that tape. I'm sorry, but I really think you're being a little naive. Okay, look, look, time out. Just time out, all right? You're going to drive me and you both crazy, all right? Will you just try for me to put it out of your mind, please? Believe me, I wish that I could pretend this problem wasn't here, but it is. Okay, but let me ask you one question, all right? What? If the world were a perfect place, how would you like to spend the evening? That's easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. How? I want to spend it alone with you. Okay. Feeling safe all right. and protected. Right, all right. Now come over here and sit down, and that's exactly what we're going to do, all right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I make one more request? Absolutely. Anything. Will you hold me, Paul? Please. Find a station you don't like. Oh, come on. I can find something. I know it. Maybe not. <laughs> I told you. I can find something. Oh, I'll find something you can dance to. I don't think you're going to have much luck. Oh, come on. There has to be something you can dance to. Okay. Well, hello, Bill. What the hell are you doing here? Waiting for you. Time we had a little chat.
Tonight at 9, 8 central, when Roseanne and Jackie find out their dad has passed away, they do what all good...